Aquarius. This is your January 2018 love reading. Thanks for showing up to watch this video. This is for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. This is also if you're spying on an Aquarius, and if you don't know your Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus, there's a link in the description box below that will tell you how to figure that out. And then the other thing is um, I just always like to tell people that I believe the moon sign is going to be your best uh, indicator for how your love life is going to go each month. Okay, so here we go. Aquarius, what do you want in regards to love in January? <laughs> They're like, well, here's the deal. You haven't really decided what you want to go after, if you want to go after anything in regards to love, because you realize that in terms of the universe, like things are kind of shifting, changing right now. And so you don't know what your life is going to be like in the next year or five years or whatever. So how in the hell is it possible to really try to attract love right now? I know that I want it, but I don't know how I want it. I don't know when I want it. I don't know what kind of love I want. And so they're saying um, you might be a little bit more focused on self-love and that's not bad. So what have you already learned in love in 2017 and before that that applies to your life now in January? What they're saying is, You've learned a lot about other people and about relationships, especially um, like what kind of relationships you have you should have <laughs> with people. Like, should this relationship just be purely physical because we're attracted to each other, but we don't want the same things? Those are lessons that you've learned. You've learned when to um, kind of cease fire. You know, you might be attracted to somebody for one reason or another, and then you go, "Ooh, I know that that's not my type now." You know. And so they say you've also learned not to be selfish or to be controlling or manipulative or uh, bossy. So those are all really positive things. It seems like Aquarius has taken a lot of time to kind of understand who they are in order to figure out who a good match is. The trouble is we just need to figure out how to go after that match. Now that we know who isn't a match, how do we attract who is one, right? So let's see if we can get some information on that. They say, so far, a lot of you feel like maybe this hasn't been very successful. Like, you're not uh, drawing in the kind of people who would create a stable relationship for you. And you just know, like, oh, I don't want to deal with motherfuckers like that. So, <laughs> what's the guidance here? They say that um, in terms of how you're going to think about things moving forward, you can just ask spirit, the universe, God, Allah, angels, whatever, for your soulmate, for deep, intimate bonds and connections. It doesn't have to make sense yet how it's going to work in your life, how um, you're going to live your lives together. Because you can communicate like on a mental level almost, like on a heart, ch heart chakra to heart chakra level about how you would compromise to create the future that works for both of you. So they're saying, yeah, it's challenging, but you know, don't don't quit looking for that very deep and emotionally intimate relationship because it is out there for you. So for those I forgot to mention I think that um this is for couples and singles. So if you are in um, a relationship, then you would just take the messages as like within the relationship, what is it that I'm learning? So in this specific instance, it would be more like, okay, I'm seeing where we don't agree eye to eye. And then the bigger picture just is saying that, you know what, we are connected, we're bonded, we love each other. So maybe that's where our focus needs to be as opposed to the the different things that we don't agree on in our life. Like we can come to compromises because we are connected from heart chakra to heart chakra. Okay. What are you ready for love this month? And if not, how do we prepare for that? They say that some of you here have this un um, this, this energy here, this idea that isn't serving you very well. You're like, oh my gosh, a love life, you know, or dating or relationships are so much work. It's so much work on top of all these other things that I have going on in my life. 
But what they're saying is like, even though these other things are important, your job, you know, your home, your routines, like all of these things, this is an unhealthy way to view your love life, okay? They're saying that what's going to happen if you continue to think about things in this regard is it's going to become kind of a downward negative spiral in which it takes longer to either draw in the new love that you want or if you're in a relationship where um, it becomes kind of like codependent and unhealthy and you're not able to grow together, you start to grow apart. So that's just a word of caution for you there. Don't think of your relationship as work in a negative sense. Um, uh, so, I mean, you know, you hear psychologists and things say things like, you know, a relationship is something you have to work at every day. That's true. But what you should say maybe, or your way of thinking about it, or like a more positive way to frame it is it's a joy to show love, you know, don't, don't make it sound like work, you know, make it sound like something fun, like something pleasurable however it is that you do that as I said that it was 555 into the video which is um, a strong message from your angel saying out with the old in with the new out with the old ways of phrasing things or old outdated ideas and welcome new exciting ones into your life okay so what whoa they say the challenge here is to focus on the positive things not on the things that are negative within your relationship or in trying to attract a relationship which is a little redundant because we just talked about that. But if it wasn't clear to somebody, <laughs> now it should be. They say this is a lesson that you're not quite done learning. Okay. So what are the subconscious energies that will come up for you to work through in January in regards to love? And they're saying exactly that. Um, that there are some things in the past or in the present that make you sad. But you've got to look at the silver lining, at the positive aspects of everything everything and I know that sounds ridiculous like sometimes you know let's say you god forbid you lost a child what is the positive there you know how could you frame that as positive well you learn about your strength you learn that um maybe you connect more to god or to other people um maybe you become a change maker because whatever kind of horrible disease they had um you take a strong role in the advancement or research for that disease and you save hundreds of thousands of lives down the road. Like there's, it's all, it's hard to see sometimes, but there's always a positive that comes out of a negative. Nothing that happens in life is bad. It feels bad. It feels fucking horrible sometimes, but there's always good to come out of it. It's something that's either a lesson or it's a blessing. But a lesson is a blessing. Does that make sense? I know that's kind of a controversial way to see things, but um, it's actually true. So, okay, what are your current blockages and how are you going to get past them? They're saying that the blockage is that it's very difficult to see what it is that you desire in regards to a relationship. So, like, for example, if you wanted to vision board something, you're like, I don't even know where to start. I, I can't put an image here. They're saying that... Some of you just, some of you actually would do really well with a vacation right now. Like that would kind of clear your mind and help you in order to be able to manifest the things that you want. Now, others of you, um, you're just kind of refusing to even think about these things. And the reason why is because you're just, you put like a wall up and you're not necessarily wanting to receive love that's right in front of you. And this has to go with that, um, this is actually a lot of signs this month, they're putting up walls, I think Capricorn did it, I think Pisces did it, a lot of people. But what they're saying is that, um, you know, love is coming towards you, but you don't see it. You're refusing to see it um, because you're focused on the things that are wrong as opposed to the things that are good in your life, okay? Now, how can you ready your heart for love in the month of January? They say it's not about, you know, really overflowing with love and joy and happiness right now because, yeah, things kind of suck. Um, but it's looking at those feelings. It's acknowledging them and finding that positive aspect because, yeah, circumstances suck. A lot of you are going through some shit right now. And, you know, it's out of your control. It were, it, they were things that happened to you, not that you caused. So it's very, very difficult to find the positive. I agree with you, and I don't fault you for that at all. But if you can try to find the blessing, you'll be much better served. Okay, 
how do you ready your mind for love? They say it's not actually about going out and talking to other people. It's not about um, hitting people up on Facebook or Tinder or anything like that. It is actually looking at your emotions, addressing them, and then finding the beauty in each thing that sucks right now. Because again, they're like, we hear you. Circumstances are shit. We get it. Um, they're saying like deep inner reflection and stuff is going to help you, but not necessarily talking to others about it. It's a very personal thing. And some people do do better um, kind of working through their feelings, you know, by talking to a best friend or a therapist. They're saying this month it's so internal for you that it might not be necessary because the danger in, I mean, there might not be a danger in talking to a psychologist or a professional, right? But what they're saying is the danger is in talking to others about how you feel, right now is that um, they can put their own bias or opinion on it and then kind of encourage you to continue thinking about things in a way that isn't healthy for you. Or they can remind you, for example, if you have a shitty boyfriend, okay, and you're talking to your friend about the latest thing that your shitty boyfriend did. Now, they're going to say, yeah, that sucks and you know I'm sorry you're hurting whatever and then they're gonna remind you of all of the other shitty shit they did in the past okay so now you're focused on all of these past things that were total crap and it's compounding on top of the crap that you're already dealing with like this crushing weight that makes you feel super negative whereas instead if you just processed it on your own with this guidance and you're like oh you know so-and-so cheated on me again you're like well the good news is I know that this person doesn't change. They continually cheat. They're a fucking asshole and it's time to move on. Does that make sense? So it could be anything like that. But it's like you need to be the one who looks within and figures that out. You need to not be reminded by other people about how shitty your circumstances are because you already know. And I'm sorry you're having a shitty month. I really am. I love Aquariuses, and I feel really bad for you. Okay, how are you going to ready your mind for love? They say, you know, you, <laughs> so this is cute, because they're like, when we're saying all that, we don't mean you should be on your own. You, you should totally be around other people. Just don't tell them about your problems, because, <laughs> you know, advice is free for a reason, because sometimes it sucks. They're like, you just don't, you know, don't speak about the things that, that suck because then you're going to have to come up. To, you, you can't defend yourself then, you know, like you can't, you can't really grow and start ascending the stairs of like getting to this more positive place. If you're talking about that stuff with other people. Okay. How are you going to ready your spirit for love? They say, now some of you aren't going to put the past behind you, which isn't actually a bad thing because it's somewhat empowering. It's going to make you feel confident and good about yourself. Like as you forgive other people, as you forgive yourself for things, like you start to feel more empowered towards the end of the month. Now by the end of January, you might not be completely done with this transformation and you might not feel completely um, ready and enthused to be in a relationship. But the good news is that even though... Um, you know, you're coming out of this period of when like things just in general sort of suck. Um, the good news is that like you're, you're looking at them differently. You're looking at them through a different lens, through a very honest and truthful lens. And you're being super real with yourself. And so they're saying like, this is going to cause some transitions, but this is ultimately going to make your life a lot more peaceful. Um, you're going to walk away from situations that aren't good for you. This could be people. This could be workplace things. This could be um, a pattern of thinking. And they're saying that it's, um, it's not even the details that matter. It's more just in general taking steps um, towards 
better things, even though the shit in your life is not in your control. Like you are deciding to see things a different way and that is going to make the world of difference in regards to your love life and in all other aspects of your life actually. Um, 2018 will get much better for you, but it might not get as than 2017, but it might not get as better as fast as other signs because you're not quite finished yet at um, shifting the way that you perceive things. Okay. And not any, I don't know that there's any sign who's, you know, totally mastered it yet, but it's a work in progress. And they're like, good. As long as you're doing that, good. Then you can expect good things and you can expect love. Um, so what's a positive thing that you can do this month? in order to find a partner or to grow love in your current relationship. And again, um, this is going to be a lot about communication and deep thinking within ourselves. Not so much feelings. It's feelings first. Look at the feeling. Figure out what the thought is that goes with it and then shift the thinking. So they're saying, okay, shitty circumstances. Again, we know. Be real with yourself, though, about those. Be real about, you know, for example, you lose a job and you're like, oh man, this is the worst. How am I going to eat? How am I going to keep my apartment? How am I going to this? How am I going to go do that? And then it just becomes like, like a negative vortex, right? And it just gets worse and worse and worse. They're saying, if you're really real with yourself, you say, um, okay, you know what? There were things about that job I didn't like. I didn't like the schedule. I didn't like um, this you know, Angela, who sat next to me, she was always complaining or, you know, I didn't like this. This gives me an opportunity to do something different, to find a different job, a better job, a higher paying job. It gives me the opportunity to move. It gives me the opportunity to meet new people, all of those kind of things, even though, um, yeah, it sucks, but there are positive aspects. And they're like, as soon as you do that, you're going to feel a lot more at peace and you're going to be moving a lot quicker towards the things that you actually desire. They say you don't have to worry about the details so much of where you're going, but you're going to know that you're going in a positive direction, even though you can't quite see where that is yet. But they're saying be really honest with yourself and really open with yourself um, and really acknowledge that, you know, oftentimes there was actually a, a study on this um, not so long ago where they pulled a bunch of people and they asked them, what was the worst thing in your whole life that ever happened? And, you know, people had these horrible things that happened to them. They were raped. They were this. They were that. And um, and then they said, okay, well, what was the best thing that ever happened to you? And they said, well, it was the same situation. And the reason why is because it stirs something in them. When, when shit things happen, it forces us to grow, change, and evolve. And that's kind of your energy right now. So I'm going to shift decks here and I'm going to give you a sort of meditation theme for the month and then some positive affirmations to go with that. So something you can focus on and they have concentration. Okay, so they say every worthwhile achievement in life is going to depend on cultivating the power of concentration. The more intently you're able to focus your attention on one thing, the more likely you are to be successful in your ambitions. So one thing at a time for you guys, okay? Um, but I do want to say I think, think that this concentration really needs to be on the positive thinking, like the looking at situations and saying, okay, this is the good to come of it. I don't know, or maybe I don't know what the good is, but I'm assured that um, the universe is going to bring me something good as, as a result. So what you can say to try to get yourself into concentration mode is my mind is empty of extraneous thoughts. I am focusing on a single captivating object, like a candle or like you can look at a crack in the floor. You're just going to focus your eyes somewhere, okay? My attention shall remain on that object for a long time despite disturbances. A well-developed power of concentration will help me to solve problems. So if you could set a timer like on your phone, two minutes, just to like kind of stare there and like clear your thoughts away. Um, this is also going to be good training for you when your thoughts have been a little bit negative with all of these shitty things that are happening in your life to get used to clearing those away, letting them go. And then afterwards, you can come back to them one at a time and think of a positive opposite. Does that make sense? So best of luck in love. Um, I know that this reading wasn't so much about love as it was just life in general, but um, 
in doing this, I think that you're going to find that love comes to you a lot quicker or the love relationships that you have, whether those are romantic or um, with friends, with family, will become a lot more fulfilled and deeper and intimate. Okay, see you next month.